Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge. Today, we're gonna take a look at the newly added journey, Siri's journey this time instead of Dandelion and Geralt's journey. And uh, Siri is actually accompanied by Vesemir this time. Um, in this video, we'll also be discussing some of the patch notes from uh, the recent patch from Tuesday. And um, yeah, that will be it for this episode. So we're going to go both into detail for the journey as well as the patch notes. So let's start with the journey. So Ciri's journey works similarly to Geralt's journey last time. I think the rewards are basically uh, very, very similar. You get about the same amount of cosmetics and reward points from the journeys themselves. But Jason Slama actually indicated that this is the most rewarding journey up to this point. Why that is, I'll show you in a second, but I definitely agree with him. Um, the main reason for this is, and I have to move away from this screen for a second to show you this, it's mainly because of two things. So I move to the contract screen here. Um, first and foremost, the journey will now continue after level 100. So once you're done with the first 100 levels, uh, it will just keep going and give you two reward points for every level. Kind of the same way that the um, the previous months worked with the, the 24 crown points for every level. Uh, aside from the fact that of course you still get the well-rested crowns in this system. So the first 14 reward points are doubled. Um, on top of all of that, there are also these quests, these contracts that are running behind the scenes. Um, as with the previous journey, you get about 20 reward points for completing the standard journey and the extended journey. But on top of all of that, you also get um, extra titles. That's not the most important one. But once you actually go past level 100, so this one, um, there are extra reward points added for every 5 to 10 levels. So as you can see, um, right on the top of the screen here, you have Stepping Beyond. So the first time you get one, ten, an extra 10 reward points for reaching level 101, then an extra 10 for reaching 105, another 15 for level 115, then another 15 for 125, another 20 for 135, and then another 20 for 150. So that makes it very, very profitable to get to level 100 as fast as possible. You can do that by buying these levels again, as you could the last time. I don't recommend that because these are very, very expensive. But if you're a prolific um, player of the game, this definitely works in your favor. Uh, you also get another one, uh, 20 reward points underneath that for 150 levels. But I'm not exactly sure if that works in conjunction. Um, there's also extra avatars. Uh, and it even goes up to, I don't know if you get anything else from this, it doesn't seem like it. Um, oh well, cosmetics, so you get the Scarlet Katana, the Kitsune Mask, uh, I don't know if, yeah, there we go. So you actually get some more cosmetics for higher levels as well. So there we go, the tails in the back, that is actually really, really nice. Um, so there are more cosmetics tied to further leveling even beyond the level 100 cap. It's gonna be hard to get there without buying levels, I'll tell you that right now. But it is really cool that it has been included. Um, and another 20 reward points when you reach level 175, on top of, I don't know if these are supposed to be running concurrently, but it's a bit weird. Um, and then you can also get a title series biggest fan if you complete every single one of them. And you also get a, an Ihuara Quax, I'm gonna, fuck up the name, Ihuara Quax avatar, so the uh, unicorn that helps out Siri in the books, um, avatar in, uh, in case you have yeah played 50 games with a unicorn coin. Um, there's a few other ones here, uh, so if you play 100 games with a Ronin or Scarlet Ronin outfit, so the Scarlet Ronin is the one you can get with uh, over leveling, you get the straw hat, which uh, definitely fits the Asian team. Then we get Path of the Witcher and you get the Silver Zirael Sword if you manage to play 150 games as Siri. And that's about it for the extra cosmetics. So let's go back to the normal journey because of course that's where all the fun lies in the coming 
probably two months for most players. So as with the previous journey, I think the prices still remain the same. So it's about uh, 10 or 11 uh, euros, depending on whether you're buying this on mobile. So on mobile, it's still more expensive because of the 30% profit cut that both Apple and Google take. I think even Steam does the same thing. So if you wanna go for both the cheapest option and the option that CD Projekt Red gets the most profit from, from is the, uh, you need to go with GOG. Uh, so good old games, if you go through that and buy the expansion or the, the, the season pass through there, or any of the other leveling stuff uh, through there, you'll get the most bang for your buck because it's gonna be cheaper and uh, CDPR doesn't need to uh, provide a 30% profit cut to Apple, Google or uh, Steam. So that being said, um, the prices still remain the same. So in my mind, the leveling prices are still way too overboard. So it's still about uh, five euros and a half for every six levels, as you can see. So there we go, 11 for that. And I think it's the same with the uh, higher tier levels because that was really outrageous last time. So yeah, we can still, you can get to level 101 go for 95 euros. I feel it's cheaper than before. Because I think those final levels were more costly before and it doesn't seem to be the case this time. I think they might have leveled that out. Um, so that's good at least. Um, so let's go through the uh, cosmetics just a little bit so you can get a bit of a grasp of what you're going to get. Um, the most interesting one, of course, the biggest one you're getting is uh, the Siri model, the Siri leader skin, which you can customize as you could with the Geralt leader skin. Um, and you also get the first avatar is a really, really cool, like anime style Siri version. Uh, and I'm really, really happy with that. Um, one of the other new ones is the uh, Kelpie border. So Kelpie is a Siri sword, uh, sword, no, horse, if you're not familiar with it from the books. Um, and she's like a really, really fast black horse. Uh, I don't know if the red eyes are really canon here, but uh, there we go. We get Kelpie with red eyes. And then, then, of course, to me, this is a really important one, uh, since we're, uh, I'm part of Team Elder Blood, we actually get our own title, which, of course, doesn't really point to us, but it's cool to think so. I'm going to skim through a few of these. Um, I think the most important one here as well is another customization option for the leader skin itself. So Siri gets something called Aura, which are basically particle effects that are going to surround her while you're playing a game. Um, there's a few of these, so this is the Nova uh, effect, uh, you also have snow, uh, birds and stuff like that. Um, so we'll, I'll show you those in a second. Then the Fox avatar, so the Kitsune avatar. And then we get to the coins. The coins are really cool. So they have a more uh, an elven style to them, with the blue kind of more of a gem blue than it was like the more liquid blue from uh, Geralt's coins. Uh, so I really like those. Of course, we're going to see a lot of swallows in these cosmetics because, of course, Siri is Zirael, is um, elven for swallow, which is going to link that to her. Same with the border. Um, this is probably the, the laziest cosmetic in there. It's an animated border, but and it looks really cool. Don't get me wrong on that. It looks really cool, but it is repeated about four more times in this list, just with a different color scheme. So that's that. But then, of course, the big one, the card bags. As with the previous uh, journey, Geralt's journey, we get four amazingly beautiful card backs. The first one is um, Ciri being hunted by the wild hunt. You can see them in the background there while she's riding Kelpie. It's a really, really gorgeous, but really creepy kind of card back as well. Um, really brings out the darkness of uh, Ciri's story. And uh, that's gonna repeat itself. Um, then the swallow avatar is basically the same thing as the border. So we're gonna see this one like four more times in different color schemes with a slight difference in the distortion effect on top of the bird. Uh, I'm gonna skip through a few of these uh, different hair hairstyles, so Skellige braids. This one is very interesting to me. Um, so it is marked as a Skellige Siri avatar, but to me it almost feels like a Falca avatar and skin. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the books, there's a certain point where Siri joins a bandit gang and to not reveal her own name, her own identity, she adopts the moniker Falca. And Falca is the leader, was the leader of the, uh, the most bloody rebellion in human history in The Witcher. Um, 
yeah, she doesn't really have a, a good connotation there. So the name actually fits uh, Siri as a bandit as well. And uh, Falco is also part elf, which fits Siri as well. But I feel like this is kind of like the best visualization we got from uh, the series Bandit Live, I feel like, which is kind of sad that it's now marked as a Skellige Siri, because I feel like this is just Falca. Yeah, that's that. Then we get a really cool coin. Um, you know, the, the, the skating is really, really cool if you've read the books. There's a combat scene. I'm not going to spoil everything, of course. But there's a combat scene in the books where Siri gets the upper hand because it's on ice and she uh, puts on her skates and just goes on a murder rampage. Um, I know skating is also mentioned in the games uh, a few times as she's uh, she lived in Skellige for a while. And that's, of course, a reference to that as well. But the combat scene against... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say say who it was against. But that's a really one of the coolest combat scenes in the books. Um, so this is really, really cool to see. Then we get some more. So this is the snow. Um, then we see like the, the different colored uh, animated borders and avatars. And then we get the uh, Nilfgaardian themed um, card back. So the fire possession card back. We can, I think we can see the Tower of the Swallow in the back. So I think this references the point where Siri actually teleports away from the Tower of the Swallow for the first time from the Isle of Tanet. So the Nilfgaardians attack the Isle of Tanet to get to Siri, but she manages to teleport away and blow up the entire tower in the process, which is why you can see the falling swallow um, also displayed on this card and the big Nilfgaardian knight in the background. Because if you're not familiar with the story, that big Nilfgaardian knight is actually K here, because um, he has the winged helmet on. So really, really cool card back again. A few other cool borders, um, and then we get a shaved head version of Siri, and of course her younger self, so the Care More and Adept avatar. Also really cool. And then another border linking to the uh, training scene, the training dream sequence almost from The Witcher 3, uh, with the dummy and the wooden sword. Skipping ahead a little bit, we also get a, a Siri in a Witcher outfit. Seems like the, um, I think that's actually the uh, cat style. Um, outfit I feel like so that's gonna be it's marked as a witcher outfit but I think it's with the blue it's more like the the school of the cat um, outfit here then we get the uh, swallows effect which is also really cool and a little chibi uh, Siri avatar um, a wolf coin which is fine I guess another purple version of the border and avatar and then we get to the white frost version so these are also really cool so again kind of more like an anime style Siri and this border, god damn, this is one of the most gorgeous borders ever. Um, it depicts that tower you can see uh, during the White Frost section with Geralt. And it is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, we also get another card back here, which of course depicts the final act of The Witcher 3, where Ciri needs to go through that portal. Although it also seems like, since it's called the Escape Portal, I think this might actually be referencing, now that I think about it, uh, you can also see the, the swallow in the portal there, so I think this is still the Isle of Tanet scene again, but this time we see her actually escaping with all the hands in the background, the bottom of the cart, trying to grab her while she's trying to get away. Um, so I'm guessing that this actually references that, since it's called Escape Portal, and at the end of The Witcher 3 she doesn't really escape, she just tries to end the, uh, the end of the world, tries to stop that. Um, we got a simple helmet here as well, nothing too shabby. And then, probably one of the coolest outfits here. So that's a, a full Nilfgaardian armor set for Siri herself. So the, the Nilfgaard fans are going to be very, very happy with this one. And a grumpy little Siri avatar. This is also really cool. Then we get some masks like we got with Geralt, the green versions of the avatar. We get the katana and then, of course, a unicorn coin. So Ihwara Quax comes back again here. Um, then the yellow versions of the border and the avatar, uh, and then probably the most interesting card back from a lore perspective, because this, of course, the last farewell card back, is the ending of the book series. I'm not going to spoil too much about it, but this just depicts the ending of the book series. Um, and that's, that's it. I'm not going to go deeper into that, but it's a gorgeous representation of what happens at the end of the books. If you played the games, you kind of also know what happens at the end of the books. But still, it's something that you need to experience on your own because it's, uh, it's kind of a very sad ending. 
Um, now we also got, I first thought this was going to be a Picasso version of Siri, but it is painting of Siri by Viceroy Gell's uh, avatar. So that's of course Gell's from uh, the, well, near the ending of The Witcher 3, the, uh, the councilman of the Wild Hunt, who you also see painting a naked elf at the, in the same scene in The Witcher 3. Then we get like raised light shafts. Um, I think these, got, these are called aura effects. I don't know if I mentioned that before. So these are called aura effects. And that's the last one you'll get for Siri. And then we get, of course, the cat pendant avatar as we got the wolf pendant avatar during Geralt's quest. And the actual finalist uh, lost cosmetic you're going to get in the uh, base tracks of the expansion pass are the um, Ronin skins and avatar. This is really, really cool. So the CD Projekt Red made this design a few uh, months ago, maybe even a year ago. Uh, they made a Ronin version of Geralt and also one uh, for Ciri. You could also get this in a statuette form. Uh, but it's really cool that it's now included in Gwent as well. So if you manage to reach level 100, this will be your very nice reward, along with a very a nice Oriental Siri avatar. So there's like a mix of different styles and uh, cultures in this uh, expansion pass, which I'm, I'm really, really happy for. Because, uh, yeah, it's a nice batch of, of, uh, of ornaments and, of course, a lot of reward points on top of that as well. So definitely, as with before, this is worth your money. If you're a regular player of Gwent, this is going to give you enough bang for your buck, especially compared to everything else that the game offers in the stop shop. Because if you compare the uh, 10 to 11 euro price point to what you're otherwise getting for the same price, um, it's not that much. So for example, you can now buy this uh, Gwent Open 3 bundle, the Frozen bundle, in which you support the players in the Gwent Open. Also a very good cause, of course. But you only get one leader skin and a board for the same price as the uh, full premium expansion pass. Which is, yeah, again, I don't like the uh, the differences in price points because it, uh, it's, it's sometimes just way too much. Uh, like for example, like the new leader skins when uh, that were accompanied with the Master Mirror expansion are 9 euros each for just a single leader skin, which is just too much to me. And of course you can get them all three in one go, although that's no longer an option actually now that I see this. And then 8 euros for the board as well, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. But again, um, to end this on a, on a high note, the expansion pass is definitely worth your money, the premium pass. Now that concludes the discussion on the journey. So journey, definitely worth your money. It's the same system as before. So if you're wondering what the mathematics behind that was, you can check out my uh, original journey video. But I'm gonna highlight a few of the changes in the cards as well, because a few cards were actually uh, changed or their abilities were removed. And I wanted to discuss them just really quickly over here. So first off, you know what, let's start with Skellige, because Skellige was problematic in the previous months and it didn't really change all that much. Um, so if you check out Harold, the only thing that really changed on Harold is the fact that it, the tooltip now also says that the revived warrior is going to be doomed. And I feel like, as originally his damage was piercing, but they removed that, I think, during last month. I'm not exactly sure when that re was removed. But it's no longer, it no longer says that the damage that Harold does is uh, piercing, so it doesn't ignore armor anymore. Um, I think the biggest nerf that was handed out to Skellige was something that wasn't really necessary in my mind. Um, and it's on Tirgvi. Tirgvi is still, still has the same ability, but they changed how Rupture works. So originally Rupture uh, damages the unit that it was applied to by his power, its power its complete power, its current power. Uh, so the only way to counter that was either to remove it by purifying, which was still very prevalent, or actually applying armor so that the unit still survives. Nevertheless, if it triggers, it does a huge amount of damage, especially on a high power unit. But right now, Rupture has been changed to damage this unit equal to its base power, which is a very significant nerf, and I don't really know why they did this, because I don't think Dirkvi was the more um, problematic card. I think the more problematic cards are uh, stuff like Harold himself, since he can revive um, a warrior and then trigger his own ability immediately, especially since it was uh, piercing damage before. Um, but I still feel that 
this guy is the biggest problem. Because if you if you manage to put a great sword on the board and then hit a very high power unit with Morkvark, this can consist of like 40 point swings and it's just too much for a single 10 provision card. Um, they're probably not going to change him anytime soon, but for me, this is the most problematic card um, in Skellige at the moment. Aside from the fact that a lot of the uh, lower provision cards are also very, very strong. Because like the uh, the Thrillsack Invader is 7 points for 4 provision uh, in the last round, which is it's just crazy. Same with the Uncreate Raiders. They're, um, I think, 8 points for 5 provisions, which is better than the 7 for 4. But still, it consists of damage, which again consists of removal. The only really nerf that they applied on the bronze cards is the Drummond Berserker. So they changed his Berserk count from 2 to 3. So now he only takes 2 damage and deals 2 damage before he transforms into a bear. Um, it's a good nerf, I feel like. So that brings his total point total, his possible point total, also to 8. So 2 damage and then the 6 power of the bear. Um, it's better, it's better than it was before and it's consistent with the radius now as well. But still the bronzes in Skellige are very very strong which is part of the problem. Um, and I think Morgvark is just the biggest problem. Um, if, you, if you play very high powered units then Morgvark is just gonna be an, an instant win for the uh, Skellige side, your, your opponent if he plays Skellige. That's it about for Skellige, nothing really changed aside from that, there was a, a few little tweaks. Um, oh, maybe one I wanted to check out is uh, they changed Vobjorn's ability, which was a little bit sad because I really liked Vobjorn's ability, I'm looking for him here, there he is. Um, so instead of, so Vobjorn's original ability, I think he had 10 provisions and you could instantly destroy a damaged unit, it was really cool, it wasn't always that useful, but it still had its uses against stuff like monsters for example. Um, now they changed him to a Ray Tutor, so basically adding the option into Skellige as well as it was available in any other uh, faction as well. They did, they created a, a few other tutors as well to uh, just make this consistent across most factions. So sadly his ability changed, um, which brings us right to another big boy who lost his ability. And that means going to monsters because Imlarit lost his ability as well. So no longer he's boosting a unit to 7 power. Um, he just has, he now has actually, uh, I think he has, um, I think that was Wispest power, right? Discard a monster unit and boost self by its power, then draw a card. So that's the original uh, ability of Wispest that went to Gels in Master Mirror. And now I think Gals has uh, the same tutor ability as Fabjorn received. So he's going to be 8 provisions. And there he is. He, you can now use Gals to play a Wild Hunt special card from your deck. Which is I think probably the worst tutor in the game. Because there aren't that many Wild Hunt special cards. If you check for Wild Hunt. As I thought there are like 3 Wild Hunt special cards. So you have... You have the uh, Art Gate, so the, the Frost Spawner, then the Nagelfar, which is probably the, use, the most useful one to pull, and then the Red Riders, but that's about it. So not that many Wild Hunt special cards, so I don't think we actually needed that tutor. We could have just changed um, the existing tutor into just... Because um, I think we have that, right? Yeah, we could have changed Whisper's Tribute to just say, okay, a monster special card, for example, instead of just an organic card, but... It is what it is. We now have two tutors in monsters. Same as with uh, Skellige, by the way, because we also have the alchemy tutor uh, there. And I think the last faction we need to take a quick look at. The other ones didn't really change all that much. Squirtel didn't really change. Northern Realms is fine. And Nilfgaard, they left Nilfgaard completely alone. Although there are still some very problematic cards in Nilfgaard. That is still the same. Um, so I think the biggest thing they changed is um, if you're a fan of Hidden Cash, this has been boosted to, uh, I think I can show you that right here. So Hidden Cash has been boosted to uh, gaining three coins instead of two each turn, uh, not each turn, each round. Um, so that makes Hidden Cash back uh, a, a bit more powerful again, uh, so you can use it again. Um, and they also changed a few of the Horde abilities, like for example, uh, Lieutenant von Hurst's Horde ability has been reduced from 5 to 4, so that's going to be really, really nice. And a few other Horde abilities were reduced in cost as well. And then the biggest change they, think to, uh, they made to my mind is um, Jacques. 
So they changed the final form of Jacques, so Jacques Grandmaster, to... Uh, so originally he was boosted by one every time you played a Firesworn card. Right now they changed that to giving you a coin every time you play a Firesworn card and giving him the extra ability of boosting himself by one for every coin you spend. Uh, so on fee. Which is really, really cool because it makes Jock even more flexible than he already was. So he gains uh, Veil, he gains uh, four coins. You can use those four coins to spawn two, two Flaming Rose Footmen. And then you can use the extra coins you still have at the end of the round by boosting him uh, until you're out of coins. So with this new Jock, you have an extra spender, which means that you're less likely to end up with spare coins at the end of the match giving you a better chance at actually winning. So I'm really confident that my uh, my original New Religion deck is now even stronger. As you can see, I also changed out a few cards to get Azar Javed in, um, to give me a bit of protection against Skellige, most likely. Um, but that's about it on that front. I wanted to quickly dive into, because I, I mentioned it, um, I feel like there's a few cards in Skell and Nilfgaard that still needs to change. Uh, and it mainly applies to status effects. Um, in Master Mirror we added Veil. We saw Veil coming in as a way of protecting you from status effects. But the problem is that Nilfgaard has multiple ways of getting around that as well. Aside from just purifying it away. So the main problem is of course still Vincent from Morlehem. Because he can destroy an enemy unit with status. And... I know this sounds like you have a caveat there, you need to have an enemy unit with a status, but Nilfgaard has a lot of ways to apply statuses, so basically this card can destroy anything. Um, defenders don't help because Defender itself is a status, so he can just destroy the Defender in one go. Veil is the biggest problem to me. Veil itself is also a status, so you're trying to protect a unit from status decks, but then you get destroyed by one of the strongest cards in a status deck. A card that is basically an auto-include in uh, Nilfgaard, even though I don't include it in my uh, Assimilate deck here. But it is a problem. I feel like um, Vincent van Morleham and the, uh, the Thirsty Dames need to change their effect to only trigger on negative status effects. Because um, there are just too many status effects in the game right now. I'm actually looking for Thirsty Dame. There she is. Um, there are too many status effects. If you think about it, right now we have uh, Vitality and Bleeding, we have Resilience, we have Shield, those are all the positive ones, we have Veil, um, we have Poison, Locking, and uh, Defender. So th those are nine status effects. I might have forgotten about one. Yeah, Immunity is also an effect. So there would be a way to applying that. And Status, uh, Spying, Spying, 11 effects. And all of those actually trigger both the Thirsty Dame and they can be destroyed with Vincent van Morlehem. Um, the reason why I think it's an option to do that to Vincent van Morlehem so that he only reacts to negative effects. So negative effects being uh, bleeding, locking and poison. Um, the reason for that is because Nilfgaard also has Invocation. Um, and Invocation is a pretty low provision card for basically saying just remove any card from the field on your opponent's side. It's only nine provisions and on top of that you basically steal the card because you put that enemy unit on top of your deck allowing you to play that same unit. Um, either we need to put the provision cost for this card up or we just change the effect on Vincent van Morlehem. I think it's not that much of a nerf to make him only react to negative status effects. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion on that. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of Nilfgaard aside from the uh, the Assimilate uh, archetype. But uh, yeah, I feel like it's just too easy for Nilfgaard to take out multiple high-powered units and still holding on to Devotion as well, uh, which has become more and more important as well. Um, but that's just my two cents on that. And that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions about Journey or any of the patch notes, let me know. Um, I'll be glad to answer those in the comment section down below. And uh, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like right here in YouTube as well. And um, if you want to see any of my other videos, I have deck guides available from last season, a few of them, uh, like a Shiro deck in Squiretel, and then of course the New Religion Syndicate deck. 
I'm also working on a few more decks after these patch notes, so look forward to those uh, by the end of the week as well. Uh, and now I'm gonna just try to relax in the heat wave that's coming up here in uh, Belgium. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gwentech and see you in the next video. Goodbye.